Welcome back. Here you see a very simple parallel circuit. So up to now we've been looking at series circuits and it, you can tell from this picture how very different series and parallel circuits are. So in series circuits we only had one path for current but here in our parallel circuit you can see from the red lines I'm putting up that there are multiple paths for current to flow. And so a parallel circuit is often known as a current divider because it takes total current and divides it up amongst the branches based on the resistive value of those branches. Now this is a very simple parallel circuit. Each one of our branches only has one um, resistor in it, R1, R2, and R3. And I'm going to go ahead and pop up the branches so we can associate each of them. Okay. So in a parallel circuit, one of the first things you're going to want to do is look for total resistance. Now the resistance formula in parallel is quite a bit different than the resistance formula in series. In series, we just added our resistors together. But in parallel, you will find that the total resistance will be smaller than the resistance of your smallest branch. So here's our formula for resistance. And you will notice that this is a 1 over formula. And so what we'll do is we'll take 1 over 10k, which is the total ohmic value of branch 1, 1 over 5k, which is the ohmic value for branch 2, and 1 over 20k, which is the ohmic value for branch 3. We'll total that, and then we'll take 1 over it, and we get a total of 2.86k ohms. Now you can see that that is less than our smallest branch, which is branch 2. It has R2 in it which is 5k ohms. So the rule is true and we find that we do indeed have less total resistance than any one of our individual branches. That's a good double check for you if you ever find yourself wondering did I do the formula right. So next we're going to look at how to figure out branch current. We're going to start with branch 1. So in branch 1 all we do is take voltage divided by the resistive value of branch 1. In this case it is 100 volts divided by 10k ohms, which gives us a total current for branch 1 of 10 milliamps. So then we go over to branch 2 and we do the same process, voltage divided by the resistance. And so 100 divided by 5k gives us a current through branch 2 of 20 milliamps. And finally, branch 3, we take voltage divided by the resistance of branch 3, 100 divided by 20k ohms and we get a current for branch 3 of 5 milliamps. Now there are a couple of ways to combine current together. So you can add them if you figure out all the individual branch currents, or you can use Ohm's Law. So we're going to start with adding them together. So we see that total current is equal to the current of branch 1 plus the current of branch 2 plus the current of branch 3, which makes sense because we said if we have total current and we divide it up amongst our branches in parallel, that if we add them all back together, we would have total current again. So we add all those branches together, 10 milli, 20 milli, and 5 milliamps, and we get a total current of 35 milliamps. Now we can do it also using Ohm's Law. We have already figured out total resistance up here, which is 2.86K. So Ohm's Law is voltage divided by resistance equals current. And if I take my 100 and divide it by 2.86k ohms, I find that my total current also comes out to 35 milliamps. So you can see from that that it doesn't matter which way you get to total current. They will both get you the correct answer. So one last thing to remember on parallel circuits is that although they are current dividers, voltage is constant in a parallel. So that means that the voltage applied is the same voltage that you see on branch 1, branch 2, and branch 3. So in this case, because all of those branches only have one resistor in them, R1 will be 100 volts, R2 will be 100 volts, and R3 will be 100 volts. All right, I hope you learned something about parallel circuits. Next, we are going to cover opens in a parallel circuit.